So I saw Thor Love and Thunder, which um, I enjoyed both for uh, Christian Bale's performance. I've been pretty disappointed with Christian Bale performances uh, as of late. It seems like all he ever does is like, I'm Christian Bale. I'm really depressed. But this was actually like more of like a him actually playing a character, which is cool. You know, having, the last time I saw Christian Bale actually exhibit any passion was in uh, Terminator Salvation. Not actually the movie, but in that angry screed where he yelled at the, uh, the guy who was, I was looking at the lights, you know? <laughs> that was pretty fun. I enjoyed, like, the overall, um, like, 80s style uh, cheesiness of the Thor movie. Um, I'll probably talk about it a little bit more on Fighting Boys. One of the things I liked about it, though, that I will say here is that it didn't seem like it was for everyone, which is good because too much Marvel shit seems so homogenized. It's like it's trying to not be anyone's favorite movie, but it's trying to be a movie that's acceptable to everyone. You know, it's like a, a cheese pizza. It's nobody's favorite unless you're really fucking lame. Sorry, cheese pizza lovers, but get a topping. All right. Um, it's not everybody's favorite, but everyone can accept it. Like, okay, cheese pizza, whatever. And that's like what Marvel movies are. This was like, you know, had some creative toppings on it, which, you know, some people are gonna be like, oh, I don't know about these toppings. But me personally, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Jolly Ranchers on a pizza. Okay. You know, I'll go along with it. <laughs> um, we'll start listening to the audiobook version of Stephen King's On Writing, a memoir of the craft. I've also started working on my novel again. Uh, put down 1,700 words yesterday. Between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. So I guess it takes me about three hours to write 1,700 words. Um, not just raw typing, but to like actually conceive of them and stuff. I uh, almost wish I'd picked something less ambitious for my first novel. Uh, almost. Not entirely. But uh, something I, you know, something that could find to like one character's point of view. Because I'm trying to juggle this whole ensemble cast. And it's like, when, does this, when should this scene happen? When should this person do this? And how? what order should I present the information to the audience? You know, I'm always very cognizant of all these elements, but who cares? I don't want to talk about it too much until, you know, you guys have actually, uh, uh, you know, until there's at least a first draft ready for, for you know, <laughs> uh, consumption. Because I don't even know. Some things might change between now and then. I don't want to give away details. Uh, anyway, who cares about any of that? That's a bunch of self-indulgent crap. Let's talk about uh, Donald Trump's ex-wife. I know, very tragic. I know a lot of you guys are pretty broken up about this. Donald Trump's ex-wife is dead, very saddened he is to inform all those that loved her, which is pretty much no one, <laughs> no one who loved her is learning about it via this email or whatever, uh, of which there are many, that Ivana Trump has passed away in her uh, home in beautiful New York City. Or sorry, that he wouldn't just say New York City is beautiful at this point. And he would, he would, he would you know, he, he, he would uh, say it's a garbage heap, horrible, nightmare city. But, yeah, he lived there for years. Uh, she was a wonderful, beautiful, amazing woman who led a great and inspirational life, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the typical stuff you're supposed to say. And then right under that, donate to save America. <laughs> you know, uh, using the opportunity of his, his, his uh, ex-wife is dead. Mother of his children is dead. Good time to raise up some funds, right? To save America. You know, I love that. I wonder if the guy that I saw in the Chinese restaurant today uh, sent, him, sent him any money for this email. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't be surprised because this is one of those guys at the Chinese place who was, um, you know, you ever, you never meet one, you ever see one of those people who just like cannot master the indoor voice, you know, they, they just like, they think everything is like they're on the, the Shakespearean stage pre-microphone era and they have to like really project their voice out there into the world so that all may hear what they have to say. And, uh, you know, he was talking politics, which is like the combination of no volume control and talking politics and total idiot not a great combination of factors to put a human being together. I would have taken one of those out of the Jenga tower, you know? Um, he, this is, I'm going to, okay, so basically, he, what, this is what he had to say, all right? He's talking about the last election. He's like, all right, in this last election, all right, on one side, you had full-blown communism, right? Chairman Mao shit. And on the other side 
What you got is you got a guy who just run his mouth a little too much. That's the only problem with him. Just run his mouth a little too damn much, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm never going to get over these guys. Like, let's just set aside the fact that he thinks the only fault of Donald Trump is that he just, like, is a little bit mean on Twitter or whatever the hell. We'll set that aside. That's for another time. But these guys that think Joe Biden is a fucking communist, like, they think they're landing this blow against Joe Biden, like, gotcha, but they're really just proving that they do not know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, if you cannot tell the difference between a center-right, authoritarian, democratic, lame duck, do-nothing president who would clearly rather be watching reruns of Gunsmoke than lifting a finger to, to help anyone or anything in our entire fucking country. He will not do jack. He will not do shit. He will not do jack shit for this country, all right? And you look at that guy, and you cannot tell the difference between him and a fucking full-blown Joseph goddamn motherfucking Stalin communist, then not only should you not be talking politics, you should not be talking period, all right? And of course, the people with him are just like this captive audience of misery, just like, uh-huh. Oh, that's nice, Dale. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, while this dude is just bloviating his inanity. And uh, the folks unfortunate enough to be sharing a table with him are just sitting there in blank silence because they know. Even though it's the 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 South, and most of them are probably not too left-leaning themselves, they still know a dumb fuck blow hard when they see one, okay? And apparently, they see one every day of their poor, poor, miserable lives. Even funnier, a few minutes later, this same dude is talking about how Biden just can't get anything, he just ain't doing nothing for us, ain't getting nothing done, which, by the way, I actually agree with him on that. But a second ago, he was freaking Chairman Mao, right? I mean, like, say what you want about Chairman Mao... But uh, you can't really argue. He, he was a he was a go getter. He got stuff done. Okay, you might not like the stuff that he did, but he did stuff. You know, he uh, <laughs> he he led a cultural revolution that transformed radically his entire society. Joe Biden fell off his bicycle a few weeks ago, and as far as I can t tell, it's pretty much still the highlight of his presidency. Even as we speak, Joe Biden's over there in Saudi Arabia giving uh, fist bumps to Islamo-fascist theocrats. Meanwhile, he's ignoring Christo-fascist theocrats at home. This dude, Joe Biden, is like the ultimate, like, buck-passing, lame fuck, lame duck. The only thing I'd trust this motherfucker to do at this point is drool. And he, he, he still maintains he's going to run again in 2024, right? Well, uh, okay, if, if Joe Biden is, is uh, dead set against dropping out or pulling, you know, not running again, you know, if he's definitely going to run in 2024, Republicans, you get a free one, I guess. Free guy. <laughs> Have at it, you know? The Republicans, you guys could nominate a fucking golf pencil and it would win in a landslide. The only... The only guy I honestly cannot see winning at this point would be Donald Trump, whose brand is um, pretty much the only thing on Earth more toxic than our oceans. Uh, you know, the oceans that our inept leaders have failed to protect. You know, like we've got microplastics in our bodies right now. We've got weed killer in our urine. I don't know if you know that. Like 90% of people have Roundup in their bodies, you know, which causes cancer, by the way. But, you know, who cares? Because uh, everything's going to be all right. Just, you know, all you got to do is plaster on a big smile and everything will be okay. And, like, let's worry about stupid shit. Let's not worry about the stuff that's actually going to fucking destroy us. Let's worry about stupid, inane garbage. That's the, that's the ticket. Let's look at Joe Biden and be like, he's a commie. And rather than, like, I have microplastics in me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we have no priorities, all right? What we do, they're just bad. They're just wrong. It's like, you know... Your, your car's on fire, your toddler is being mauled, and they're out of donuts at the fucking supermarket, and you're fucking out there with a sign, where's my donuts? Where's my, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you've got nothing, all right? You're, you're fucking lost. 
not you necessarily watching this, but just like, you know who I'm talking about, right? There's a lot of people in this country that are fucking lost. And, uh, you know, they think that Joe Biden is some kind of pinko just because he got a fucking D next to his name and they're so lead poisoned and Fox News brained that they got no critical fucking thinking faculties anymore. You know, sometimes all I can do is just laugh. Oh, wait, I'm not laughing. <laughs>